spirituality is about how we get into. Oops, that doesn't work. Do I need to sit over here? No, just not. Just that. Just okay. move the microphone. Spirituality is about getting in touch with and living with a part of reality that is not numbered. Which means it's totally different than anything you can touch, weigh, smell, hear, see, your five senses. Now, every civilization has had some form of spirituality. Okay? When we first started out, a couple of you said, well, this isn't very Christian. And I'm going, yeah, it isn't. Christianity is one form. And later on, we're going to look at the difference between spirituality and religion. Because there is one. You know, they're, they're not just separate. Why? Well, is that how they do it? And they put this little capsule-like thing in the, one of the chambers of your heart. Can we, can we mute that? Yeah. Okay. There is also a difference between spirituality and piety. Neither is bad, neither is super good, and I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying there is a difference. Now, what I'd like to do is start with what you guys think spirituality is. I've already given you my definition which is frankly the sort of thing you would expect out of a theologian who studied this stuff for far too long. Um, how do you define spirituality? Next, a little history. A gift. A gift, okay. Connection with the spirituality, whatever the, or what the mystery, excuse me. Connection with the mystery, whatever the mystery is. What are you thinking? Understanding something beyond yourself. Okay. And understanding how you fit into this whole unimaginable business because this universe is Where do I live? People are wondering, what did you say? Oh, yes, that would be a whole thing. Staying connected to, to, to the universe, the world around you, to other people. It's, it's sensing what you all share in common, this, mm -hmm. this um, wonder of creation, future part of. It's a way of standing beyond your own narcissistic experiences. Okay. To, to to see that there's much more than you. The I always find us that by the ocean, they find the glory. You know, what do I matter in this universe? <laughs> yeah, just know that that's the greatest thing. Ditto. Ditto. I agree with you. Okay. Not necessarily ocean? Well, the natural world. Okay. I was thinking the phrase is mountaintop experience. You know, a lot of people stand on top of the mountain, which if you've ever made it all the way up to the top of the San Diego's right head, um, you know, and you look out and, oh. Any others? What are you hearing in common? What what have everybody said? Sense of wonder. Okay. Sense of connectedness to another side. With you personally. Yeah. Anything else?
Because what I've noticed is that the word narcissistic was used. Now, we tend in our society to think of that as a really bad thing. You know, you narcissistic at the core, why can't you even think of anybody else? <laughs> What it really means is, I am thinking of me. Is that bad? I mean, if you want to take an Old Testament view, for those of you who like Christianity and happen to believe in it, God created people to be individuals. That can be a very good thing. Now, we get Cain and Abel, and one of them's killing the other. This is not so good. So, at the very beginning, we also have how do you relate to others? And then at the very beginning, you have God saying, Yo, dudes, this is okay. That is not okay. Follow the rules. And you know, Eve tells Adam, and Adam is the first one to actually break the rule. And you have this relationship going. So all of this is in the very beginning. Spirituality is something that is built in the humans. It just is. Now, it's very personal. How so? I mean, you know, how you how you view it and what it means to you. I mean, it is everybody, but it also begins personally. Okay. Yeah. So narcissistic that way, but yet for everyone. We we all have different experiences. And uh, the human brain is um, develop through experiences mm -hmm. and you know we have certain yet to explore but we also learn on what we can encounter and view. And so I think that the reason I use the word narcissistic is each of us has a different world because we've all had different experiences. I mean we perceive or understand the based on our experiences and what we decided to accept or reject or modify. And I have this uh, dear friend once talked about the relationship. She said it was hard in college to love other people because first, she says, you have to know yourself. Who knows yourself fully when you're 18 or 19? And then as you have more life experiences, you get to know yourself. And once you know yourself, it's easier to see the wonder or the magic in somebody else who is not necessarily your son, but they're still precious in the eyes of God and you need one. So um, that's why I chose the word narcissistic, which means you have to first love yourself see so you these things. All right. Anybody want to disagree or expand on that? Well, I want to say it's not being an evil maniac, but if you have to, you have to take care of yourself, Health-wise, spiritual-wise, and before you can share, because if you've got faults, they radiate to everybody else. So you have to, you know, take care of yourself and believe yourself first, and be healthy and that kind of thing before you can help anyone else. And like I said, it's not being egomaniac. It's just that if you have faults or it passes on, so it spreads. So if you take care of yourself. And, and people can feel that. Absolutely. Reaction. Absolutely. You just have that awe or whatever it is that tells them that, you know. So you need like the I like the word or. Isn't that cool? And we will at one point look more in mystics and mysticism, <laughs> and that tends to focus a lot on aura. Now, the other thing she said, and I'm not picking at you at all, it was, it was one little throwaway. If you have faults, <laughs> now, when I say the prayer, forgive us our debts 
as we, I always put in there, try to forgive <laughs> our debtors. Now, it doesn't fit the rhythm. I get that to spoke to people around me. But it occurs to me that if God doesn't forgive me any better than I forgive other people, I'm in a world of hurt. Because I know I have faults. But that spirituality, that getting in touch with whatever it is. How did you say it? I don't remember. Okay. Uh, he said he gave us a really nice definition at the time. Now, what I'd like you to do is look at what it spoke to you. Now, you may think you just picked it up off the table, and those of you who came in later, you had fewer things. I get that. But of what was up there and what you got, what you picked up, look at it. Look at it carefully. Not the paper she's handing out. Not this. Stuff okay. you picked up from, no, not those. Oh, the stuff you picked up from my table. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just putting the break. The stuff you picked up from my table. Now, just leave those there for me. Look at the stuff you picked up from my team. Why? What is it saying to you? Or what really bugs you about it? Because sometimes that can happen. Some of us are drawn to, you know, something that's going to challenge us. Oh, I picked this up because that's all these clients in China. But you know, uh, so it's a lot of them. You're still on the Lord's The Lord's voice. The Lord's voice. Okay. But, but I didn't pick it up because of that. Okay. <laughs> I am assuming, okay, just in case you guys don't know me, um, I never assume. A Christian out. Okay, I yes, I went to seminary for the other twelve years. Yes, I'm very well seen in the Christian tradition. I also did world religions, and when I taught, what I taught was world history across eight thousand years. Okay, so I do not, as some of you may have noticed, I do not assume a Christian background. I do not assume a God that loves you, a God that did creation, a God that actually gives a flip what you do. There are religions that don't do that. So that's why I want you to look at what you picked and think about why it spoke to you. Well, I just thought this was the most ridiculous looking thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and she is in touch with the spirit of ridiculosity. <laughs> but I'm serious in a way because laughter is a way that we express our relationship with whatever else there is. You know, very few people laugh at a table. It is just not funny. Very few people laugh at numbers. Those numbers we use to define everything that there is. And yet laugh is very real. It's a very real way to connect with that unnoticed. What else do we have? Go for it. I have two reasons. I always think God is 
utility. It's not just on the highway. So as far as Buddha, I have a Buddha. Kind of like this car. He lives in and I kind of think that's kind of also raises a lot of the yourself from the status of it just sounds so not that I know a lot about, it, but it's enough to know that it's but I really like it when you stop think about all of us whatever we want, wherever we're at, whatever generation, whatever that's much bigger than that we have a lot. That's much. He just did about 20 different um, <laughs> Inclusivity, family, friends, peace. Oh no, I'm running out of the one. Belief systems, belief systems lots of lots of different ones. What is family? Have to do with spirituality. Okay. This big deal. Families are two different. You look at families, they are tiny little net groups, you know. Yeah. You have more of that going out there, but big connection. Okay. And if a family isn't tight, that tends to be something we notice. You know, oh, I haven't spoken to my sister in 12 years, two months and 17 days. You know, I happen to not have a sister. That's why it's. But we notice that as a factor. Or we notice that sister and brother often tend to kind of sit next to each other, you know? And, and we come together and... <laughs> I'm sorry, say it. Grandma and Otto. Exactly. Oh, Otto my grand. Five years old. Yeah. <laughs> that whole keeping up with. <laughs> but yes, you're right. They laugh. Yeah. Now, she picked something ridiculous. What did you pick? Well, it's a little ridiculous. <laughs> so, but this kind of hat comes with the, uh, with the gold beads all around its ears. I, I don't know. I, uh, I've just been doing a comparative religion thing, but the teaching comes again. And it's sort of sort of that. So the Hindu thing, I don't know what this particular part is. That's finished. There's too many to uh, keep track. Absolutely. I, I don't think he's Hindu, but he's Hindi. Anyway, he's he's a the other And it's interesting. What is that? Okay. How so? Jesus can part all one. It was written down, its words, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. Now, one reason Judaism and Christianity have survived is precisely because they wrote it down. And a lot of the ones that lived, a lot of the religions that lived at the same time never got written down. And when the generations died off that knew the stories, so did the religion. So part of it is the writing, but part of it is that oralness. 
Jesus walks around and talks to people for very well, doesn't talks to people for three years, you know. And they listen. And that connection to the other. Spirituality tends to be a relationship to something else. We've been talking about laughter, family, that by the way is Gannett, who has a whole beautiful story we'll get to later. And there's a real reason for the dragon. Um, but then we also have something like the, the mail truck. So um, I, I'm your HB's college and my husband was not attractive. And he went in the Navy and um, was an officer in the Navy in communications and actually tracked Russian submarines around the world. And he was assigned on duty. We were up here now six months before we were separated by the military. And so he was on the island, it's now in the collection of space by Grand Turks. But it was. It was not at the time. Not at the time. It was really isolated. And it was about track. And the only way we could communicate was by letter. But there was only a plane that arrived here every two weeks. It turns out now it's a CIA plane. <laughs> we didn't know. And, and so we wrote to each other every night. And um, But we only got letters every two weeks. But then we did national letters. And this is how we kept in touch. And I've also had a long-term correspondent friend for like 40 years and we started as well. And uh, scientists uh, that's Phillips. And it was this huge um, difference in lifestyles and and we learned from each other. So but I think you know I used to wait for the mail truck to arrive because I was <laughs> Letters from it, and later, years later, you know, my friends we used to handwrite um, initially, and it was just always something to learn or the culture or what's happening, and it bridged the gap of time and space, and it also expanded our sense of the world. My choices. Communication. Friendship, love, bridging the gap. Do you do that with whatever you think the outside of existence type existence is? The existence that's beyond what we can do with our senses, with our numbers. How do you bridge that gap? Stop wandering all over the United States of America and settle down because you hear the word of God in your soul. Life is just moving and trying to crawl as you come from. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I have to say something. I can remember this. Point to engineering school. Mm -hmm. Physics classes, math classes, they actually pull a humor off. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, it's hot. It is a little different. Okay. Okay. I was going to challenge my thing. <laughs> Physics is also <laughs> often related to religion. And it oh, is yeah. very oh, yeah. common. It is very common to have a dual major. It's a fine book where you track it through. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all through. Yeah. He needs to be scared. Know it all. Yeah. 
he was my father's mover. So he, he was yeah. all the smartest man in the world. Too many times, I think. Went to his bridges. A bridge to the spiritual. You know, I, I found it in the middle. Trying to be quiet and it's a very interesting fight. Funny what will appear in your mind. Like a pistol. But I, I think uh, instead of yakking all the time, try to, and I do too much anyway, sorry. Uh, trying to listen is more informative. Relationship with my God. But I do believe we are spiritual beings. And that doesn't mean that I can't have a spiritual relationship with another person. Well, they're also spiritual beings, so why not? I, <laughs> I, I, I agree. And maybe you experience God through your spirituality. Maybe that's the way God is talking to you. I don't know. There's somebody that can say one word, wrestle with this issue, and then they just bring the light in. Sweet as the God. I find, oh, God. It's God. And if your spirituality changes due to where you are in your life, I mean, I came to God camping by myself for six weeks. And that was just me and Tim. We had a lot of conversations. But then as you your life changes, it also came when I had children because they're spiritual beings and they can teach you a lot. And then as you get older and you're so wise. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it changes where you are in your life, different experiences. So it, it can come through other people. It's not it's not the same. I mean, it doesn't stay the same to your life or to other people's lives. And if you learn and grow all the time, still learning and growing. But that ain't luck. I keep trying. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know, as she said, um, sometimes it's really hard because there can be a lot of chat. And I think some people see meditation as you turn off your mind and there is no noise. And that doesn't happen. There's always something there. It's do you follow it? Do you get caught up in it? Now, the other thing said is that there is this bridge to whatever spiritual is, God, spirit, whatever you want to call it. Bridges go both ways. It's not just us crossing the bridge. There is also whatever is out there crossing the bridge this way. Now you will have people, and there I'm sure you will know people who are honest to God, true agnostics. My brother is well atheist. That that's better. True atheist. My brother is one. 
there is no other realm. This is it. You die, you become, you know, little bitty ashes come part of the soil, and then eventually you get to asparagus. And <laughs> there is nothing else for my brother. There are people in the world who are colorblind. There are people in the world who cannot hear, I mean, cannot see, and cannot see color. And the only way they know color exists is because somebody else told them. Up until about two years ago, I could not ever see depth. I knew all I saw was things going the way they teach you perspective does in a paint. I knew there was depth. I knew there was this thing people talked about 3D. I, I, you know, I, there were tests. You're, they, you look through this set of glasses and they give you a bird and they give you a, a cage and you're supposed to put the blankety blank bird into the cage. I could get the bird, I could get the cage. No problem. Put the bird in the cage, though so now. Never to put that bird in the cage. And I did that for years. And it doesn't mean that depth perception doesn't exist in whatever reality is, you know? And the rest of you experience it. So saying that other people, whoever they are, don't experience spirituality doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Okay, now I assume given that you guys came to a room where you at least had a chance to know that this was the topic, that you've at least given a clip of it, whether you personally experienced it or not. <clears throat> Some of you have had a mountaintop experience. You've looked out, you've seen the wonder, you've been on the beach, looked at all the, you know, the ocean or whatever beach you're on. You've experienced Others of you have climbed the mountain, you've made it to the mountain, you've checked it off on your list, I have now done this mountain, you know, it's time for lunch, and now we have to figure out how we're going to get down the blanket blank mountain, because going down is always harder. Same mountain, different person. It doesn't Spirituality is for this thing. Okay? So I want you to go back to what you picked. A lot of these are not Christians, some of them very, very definitely are. Why did you pick what you picked? Yes. I'm sorry, I missed the beginning. Was there any instruction in picking? Well, I just said pick up something. Pick up something. Okay. And if you don't know it, back and don't get it now. I just wanted to know if there was some instruction. You didn't get the manual. <laughs> <laughs> and we assume there are instructions. When you go to a church, there are instructions. Have you ever gone to a strange church? Just didn't fit in, you know, and you go, oh, well, hmm, let's see, this gets out at noon, maybe I can make it. That was embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I rarely manage not to be nervous today. So. That, that one I'm really, really good at. Why did you pick what you did? Well, I, I, I picked this flag. Um, it, 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 it was for the people. Of the it was medieval. Okay. 
yeah. um, sort of onward Christian soldier type of type of uh, spear and a shield. Um, I, I I guess I chose it because um, sort of medieval type of religious practice has always been interesting. It, uh, it seems like it's it's deeper, more peaceful uh, chants and peaceful uh, description of religious types of stories that they carry on forward to today, but it just seems a lot busier today, a lot noisier. It's not quite as Oh, it doesn't fill you up as much. So, uh, those are the reasons I because of the medieval concepts that it was speaking into. They get nature to, to spiritual. Yes. If you like that, the Greek Orthodox Church, I don't know where I am spelled it. Um, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you cross that little hill and then it's hiding down a bit. The Greek Orthodox Church here in Elma is very present in my high so. I wanted to go back because, yes, this medieval sense of spirituality and how it is very much about connectedness. Once upon a time, long, long ago, when Christianity was very young, there were people who went in Egypt, happened to be, not a lot of them, but they existed, who went out and sat on top of a pillow. And there they were. And they sat there. And they were communing with God. Now, each of them had one or two followers who got them food, who took away excrement, you know, all that physical stuff you have to do, body going. But they sat up there on a pillar and talked to God. And they were very, very holy. And they were very, very alone. And they were very, very interesting. And so people came to sit around and watch them and see what they're doing. And people came around and made, you know, little bit of platforms and tried to do the whole, the same thing. And pretty soon people started to make this community around this person whose whole point was to be alone. <laughs> and that's how monasticism started. How monks living in monasteries started was people wanting to be, wanting to get their spirituality from each other. Because the whole point was living together and being supportive. And when we all get up at four o'clock in the morning and we all say our prayers, everybody's doing it. And then when we all go to the dining hall, everybody's doing it. And when we all do the chanting, it doesn't matter if you have a voice like somebody in my family or if you have a voice like my grandmother, you're still there and you're still chanting. And they're all doing it together. And that is part of spirituality. Now, interestingly, just because I'm a historian, um, it was the men who were forming these spiritual communities, uh, even though some people think that men aren't as spiritual, um, the women weren't allowed to be. St. Francis, that wonderful dude that you see statues of all over the place talking to the birds, 
the whole bit. He actually was much more to lepers than he was birds. Um, but his own sister wanted to start a group with women. He said no. Because women weren't qualified. When I went to seminary, my grandfather, who had supported every other one of his grandchildren through college, looked at me and said, women don't belong there. Would not give me a penny. So when we think about people and our connection, Part of it is what is our barriers. I'm sure you guys who have been in first press for a while have all had people say to you, you have a female minister? You know, and we've done it for enough years now that it's not freaky. But the question still comes up. Do we have a female? And does that matter? Which is kind of an interesting thing. She was saying about children, you know, how you go through that phase of your life. That's kind of children, I, I noticed. Notice that that's one step on getting married is hurting them. Only in that kind of day. You go outside of yourself, another another circle opens up a little wider. And uh, when you have kids, you know, notice that and towards women, there's the, the spiritual one. Warthog stays terrible. One of the very, very, very basic, I, I didn't happen to have one, so I couldn't bring it. Um, but one of the very basic religious figures, one of the very earliest, is this woman who has breasts almost down to her knees. And, you know, she is hugely fat. And she's just sort of sitting there being grandmother boy, if you will the essence of the female who is the, the birth gift, the nurturer. And she was one of the very first figures that was worshipped. Are you worshipping the figure? Are you worshipping the icon? Are you, what are you wondering? Anybody? Could be a caretaker? Could be. People of life. Yeah. People of life. <laughs> all ideas, you know, the things that come with the that count, so something. The what? The generative one? The generative. Okay. Generates life. Okay. Artificial intelligence. Interestingly, we call it artificial intelligence. How does that fit in with spirituality? Hmm? That's a hard one. Mm -hmm. I'm having trouble with AI at the
what we talked about now, adverse, excuse me, childhood experiences. So in, in the first five or six years of your life, if you experience death or caretaker discontented, you really are psychologically prepared for the rest of your life. And when you see a leader like that, you see uh, this open, welcoming, pleasuring figure who is uh, sustaining your life. And I think that that religion, yeah, part of religion is said that I came so you might have life for one. And uh, part of spirituality is to make you have more so I see that as a moment, primitive uh, representation of life. And this artificial intelligence, AI? Oh, well, you know, I, uh, I have a son that uh, actually is from the area. Okay. And uh, that's cool. It's awesome. And you know, he loves all these possibilities. But I think that uh, you know, I'm a different generation, and uh, my grandmother was a minister, and I think they're in the my children in the church. That's no. cool, you've got all of them. Yeah, you've got them. I just think I'm still one of those in church, and uh, it's mostly my early experience, and that's a lot. But it's, I think for me, I see so many anxious uh, people at this time. And I miss something from the food that personal content, person to person, even though we might be communicating our favorite ways of solving, there is such a need for some knowledge that you're. And you don't necessarily get I, I don't get it. It's racist. And I think a lot of people are going to be oh, you know, I don't know because he's probably the first book about there. Even the people who are all sitting in the high chairs while the parents have dinner in the restaurants yeah. are, are looking at you need some, something to you know, I think we found that out during COVID. Many people had a very, very hard time because they were not interacting with people that caused a lot of problems. And it does seem that the importance of spirituality has been sort of going downhill what, what, what society wants, society wide. And, uh, and COVID really uh, brought it about. Yeah, and accelerating it. Why do you think COVID had a negative effect? I mean, one could imagine COVID having separated people would have given them a chance to stop all this chatter and to, you know, connect with a higher outside whatever. Yeah. So why did COVID? Make it go the other way. What are you thinking? I think I don't disagree with that statement. Okay. I don't agree with religion. But I'm just religious. It's for God's world. I think put them together. Yeah. Growth of spirituality is reactions to Okay. I think science is finding the source of the religious things. Uh, I understand this new world. The people away from spirituality. You've got things you find in laws and rules that are there. 
thing how the universe works, right? And, uh, that's how it is to a lot of us. I think there's more and more thinking that science is, is the uh, replacement for spiritual Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe no more. Well, I don't know. If I would argue that it's really just in the sense of I'm spiritual. I could have argued some scientists. I'm not church. They come from Alex, right? They acknowledge the other history. They're not still a topic. In my opinion, they're not. They're they're not, not they, yeah. They, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I would say, yes, scientists, they try to answer the mystery as well. Right. He is something. Even acknowledging the mystery, I think, is their spiritual problem. Because they think science is the one that makes your lab and get another question. Yeah. I agree with it. I grew up with a dad who did not go to church. Did that not? But I do not think of him not being spiritual. He did not do religion. But he, to me, it's like, well, he, I don't think he was a true atheist. I mean, he didn't, I don't think of him as thinking that once he died, he was a spiritist. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like he was not religious. Had a very bad experience very young from a very overpowering person that was totally in the hell. So he wasn't going to church as they said. But but he was he was spiritual. So yeah, I think yeah, you have to watch your religious and spiritual. Um, and somebody else going out. Somebody tells him he's going to hell. He took that seriously. And to him, that was a true spiritual experience. So he could have just laughed at it. Yeah. But he was eight or nine, and they were adults, so he, he did laugh at it. Yeah. Unless you're my brother. In which case, yeah, he did. My mo my mother pulled me out of church when she found out I was believing that stuff. You know, I was supposed to go to learn how to be a good girl. And when I, you know, actually started talking about God might exist, my mother yanked me instantly. So there are all sorts of different kinds of spirituality and you all already do that and you chose very different things that talk to you now these are all mine I want them back <laughs> but you know what you chose and I want you to think about it between now and next week Okay, because next week we are going to build up. And with any luck, I'll remember to bring them all back, but you know, as we try to forgive our trespasses. <laughs> My understanding is I'm supposed to let you guys go. Thank you. Thank you for very <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah. 